Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us again this week. We are starting a new series this week called FAM. We're going to be talking about what family looks like and how that intersects with our faith and changes the way that we see God and Jesus and Christianity and the relationship with the world, the world and those around us. But uh, before we get started, I just wanted to give you a quick disclaimer or apology. Um, if you were here Sunday morning at 8, 8.30, 9, 9.30, I know most of you weren't awake yet, but if you were chomping at the bit and were right ready to uh, see our YouTube video last week, uh, we were a little bit late, so you can go back and check that out this week. We got it uploaded by about noon on Sunday, but we just had some, some internet issues, some connectivity issues. Uh, the upload took way longer than it should have. So anyways, uh, we're just going to launch into this, this new series about family. Family is the one thing we all have in common. And of course, our families can look really different from each other. Your family looks way different than my family, looks way different from your friend's family, from even your cousin's families. For some of us, family means one parent and a few siblings, or it means two parents and no siblings. It may mean a mother and a stepmother, a father, a stepfather, and four half-brothers and sisters. Or it may mean three dogs, your dad, his girlfriend who lives with you, and her daughter. Maybe your family is one that adopted you, or the aunt or uncle you live with now. Or maybe it's the foster family you live with, or the friends around you who feel more like your family than your relatives do. When we talk about family, it can look so many different ways for each of us. And no matter what yours currently looks like, or has looked like in the past, we all come from or are part of a family of some kind. A family that, like it or not, is ours. Now here's the thing. I know not everyone likes being around their family. And that's because family can be stressful, unpredictable, and even exhausting at times. Fighting, health issues, divorce, lying, rules we don't understand, yelling, all of these things can make family a lot more complicated. Now, when we add faith to the equation, believe it or not, faith, what each of you believes or doesn't believe, can make things even more complicated with your family. Whether you've been a Christian for a long time or this whole Jesus thing is really new to you, here's what I want you to know. Faith can create tension in your family. Maybe you know this is true because your faith is really important to you. What you believe influences the way you live. And the way you live impacts your family. And that's complicated because you have a parent or a step-parent or a sibling who doesn't see faith the same way you do. Simply put, they aren't Christians. And you are. Or maybe they are Christians but they give you a hard time for taking it so seriously. And honestly, you're not sure if you're supposed to talk about any of this faith stuff with them at all. They believe something totally different than you. And that feels strange. It's like you're on to sorry, it's like you're on two totally different pages. Or maybe for you faith impacts your family in a different way. Because in your home, your mom or foster parent or grandparent who is really into this Jesus stuff. They love reading the Bible and going to church, and they think you should love it too. But if you're honest, you just aren't that interested. In fact, maybe you're here because someone in your family made you join. Maybe you're glaring at them right now through the headphones. Maybe they forced you to come because they want you to believe what they believe. Or maybe they sent you this video as a punishment for something you did that they think a little faith could fix. For you, faith is certainly making things in your family a lot more complicated. Or maybe you aren't really sure about how your family and faith mix. Maybe you've always just said you believed because your parents believed and they told you to. But as you get older, you are not so sure what you really think. But still, you're told to honor your parents 
And at your stage in life, you don't always get a lot of choice in the matter, do you? So you keep going through the motions, but inside you're struggling. And because you can't talk to your family about it, it's making things at home feel different. See what I mean? In one way or another, faith can create tension in your family, which is confusing because we're also told that faith is somehow supposed to make things better in our family. But that doesn't always feel like it's true, does it? So the question is, if faith can create tension in our families, how do we make sure our faith is actually helping to make our families better? The good news is I have an answer to that question. Well, it's not actually my answer. It's something Jesus himself actually said. And a guy named John, one of Jesus' closest friends and followers, wrote it down so that we could learn from it today. Before I tell you exactly what Jesus said, let me explain a little bit about what was happening when he said it. Just before Jesus was going to be arrested and eventually killed on the cross, he called all of his close friends and followers together for a meal. Even though Jesus had warned them that he was going to die, they didn't really understand. It didn't click with them that this was going to be the last meal they shared together as a family. To them, they were just doing what they always did as a family, sitting around a table, sharing a meal, and talking about life. But because Jesus knew the way things were about to go, he wanted to share a few important words with his closest people. So, at that dinner, he dropped this important truth to his family, out of John chapter 13, verse 35. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. That word disciples simply means that you follow Jesus. Jesus was saying that people will know we follow him and believe in him by the way we love each other. Jesus knew difficult times were coming, that his friends would be scared, persecuted, or even tempted to turn their back on him. Yet when it came down to it, Jesus took this one last opportunity to remind them that loving each other was the most important thing they could do. Loving each other was the way they could show the world that they believed in him. Loving each other was the way their faith could make an impact. And you know what? I think the same can be true in our families. If we want faith to do more than create tension in our family, if we want it to actually impact our families for better, then it's not about winning them to our side. It's not about convincing each other to believe in the same thing or arguing what's true or right. It's just about love. Because loving your family is how your faith can make an impact. Of course, this isn't always easy. Loving your family the way Jesus asks us to can be really, really difficult. In fact, some days it may be the hardest thing you're called to do. But I think Jesus knew that. I think that's why he didn't leave us to figure out how to do this on our own. A few years later, after Jesus had his last supper with his friends, God led a guy named Paul to write a bunch of letters to churches to instruct and encourage them in their faith. They were living after Jesus' death and resurrection, and honestly, most of them were a lot like us. They were people just trying to figure out how this whole faith thing impacts the different parts of our lives. In one of his letters, Paul laid out for them and for us exactly what it looks like to love others. And this is from 1 Corinthians 13. And if you've ever been to a wedding, chances are you've heard this passage. It's out of uh, 13 verses 4 to 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. 
when Jesus calls us to love one another, this is what he's asking us to do. To be patient, kind, humble, respectful, and selfless. To not get upset easily or hold grudges. To protect and trust and hope and stick it out with the people around us. To love our family the way Jesus calls us to love them. You see, loving your family is how your faith can make an impact. Love is where it starts. No matter what you believe or what your family believes when it comes to faith, this is something we can all do. We can all try to love people in our family just a little bit more. If you're doing it because you believe in Jesus, that's great. But if you're not sure that you believe in Jesus, trying to love your family can still make things better. So this week, here's what I want you to think about. What does it look like to love your family? It could mean being patient and kind to the adults in your home. To not be arrogant when, you're ta- when you talk about your beliefs with your family members who believe something different. To not be jealous of what your siblings have. Not to be rude to your mom. Not to be hot-tempered or react quickly with your dad. Whatever it is, give it a try this week. And chances are, you know this thing. You know this thing that you need to do. And to help you not get overwhelmed, start by just picking one. Pick just one of the many ways you can show love that Paul listed in his letter. Start there. Focus on that one, and you will see that love is how your faith makes our family better. Because honestly, love is what changes people. Love is what faith is all about. And even if it doesn't change them, it will change you. Remember, loving your family is how you can make an impact. Thanks, guys. Let's close in prayer. God, thank you for this reminder, this kick in the pants this eye-opening message about loving the people we live with. I pray that you would allow us to seek you in the midst of the struggles of every day. God, sometimes it's an easy, it is easy to put on a face for those we see outside of the home. But when we get home, it is so much harder to have the same patience or kindness or love. God, I pray that you would bring to mind something we need to work on today for each one of us and challenge us to show your love to those in our family. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, uh, we will see you back here next week. And until then, have an awesome time.